So now today's chat storm, we are on the cusp of summer turning to fall. And so I was wondering what is your favorite season and why? Um, I was very excited to start seeing all of the um, fall decorations. I mean, I would say probably my favorite season really is football season, um, not officially <laughs> recognized, but that is why I do love fall. I love the fall decorations. Um, anyone who knows me knows that obviously I do love candy. So even though I don't dress up, I love Halloween because you basically just walk around and get candy and that's the coolest holiday ever. Um, but what, what are some of your favorite, um, you know, seasons? What do you like? Some of you might say, well, I live where it's cold. So I love summer because I actually get to um, you know, have some warm weather, like Calissa in Wisconsin. <laughs> she really does like summer. Kelly loves spring with the flowers blooming. Um, oh, Ben says any Cajun spice, Mardi Gras. So he must like that time. Um, Calissa says the fall weather. Karen loves spring. Bonnie's cool. She says whatever season I'm in is what I love. I love that. Um, Helena says there's fall because there's birthdays, fall because love seeing the trees changing color, barb fall with Halloween, fall the kids are back in school, but that means there's more traffic sometimes. So that's, I think really, that's a tough one. Um, Melanie says that now that I'm in Arizona, I might have to go with winter because yeah, in Florida, winter's kind of nice. Uh, Shabir says I live in the San Francisco Bay Area, I love all the seasons. Shabir, I was in San Francisco and I freeze my little butt off. I was not expecting it to be this cold in July. <laughs> Michelle says fall temps drop. Um, oh, Karen says as a former teacher, her uh, school her year has always started in September. And Leslie says summer, even being flexible, just she enjoys it. So thank you all for sharing. So now Speaking of, a lot of you talked about fall. There we go. Let's talk about falls or the other F word. Um, we will have breakout rooms and everything, but I know that this is a huge concern for folks with Parkinson's is falling. Especially, I know we have some of our flying solo folks here and the concern is always, um, if you fall, you know, if you break anything or whatnot, that makes all everything else harder. So we just really want to be aware of that. So why are we falling? Well, the primary symptoms of Parkinson's disease, such as rigidity and slowness of movement, contribute to the risk of falling. Um, there's also just impaired postural reflexes. Um, Everyone hates, I, I hate to watch it, but when I was working at USF and they would be like, okay, you know, I'm gonna pull you backwards. And, you know, sometimes you just watch the person catch themselves and there was no problem. And other times I was like, oh my God, this person's about to fall, I, I oh no. And they never did, uh, Dr. Hauser or Terry always caught them, but it was just, you know, you, you knew that their uh, reflexes were not what it was. There's also postural change, kind of a tendency to stoop over a little bit as we get older. And of course, um, the shuffling gait, not picking up your feet, and then freezing that goes with Parkinson's disease. That can be very troubling. Um, I know when it comes to freezing, Terry, the nurse practitioner I used to work with, would say people would freeze and they would think the way to unfreeze is to just start leaning forward and the rest of their body will go with them. And she would say all that does is introduce your fate, your forehead to the floor. And that's not what we want to do. So we got to come up with other ways for this. Um, then we also have these non-motor symptoms, such as low blood pressure, the orthostatic hypotension, where you stand up and then you just kind of fall down. It's really more of a faint than a fall. Um, this is also why your doctor or your APP will often take your blood pressure um, lying down, lying prone, and then immediately have you sit back up to see if it dropped because they're looking for that hypotension. Um, there's just the general fatigue that can come with Parkinson's. And then also some changes in vision. If you have blurry vision and such, this can also, make it harder to see where you're going um, when, and then you just trip and fall. So what can be done? Well, 
it's not that easy because most medications for Parkinson's don't really assist with balance. That's not what they do. They're, they're treating symptoms, but that's not one of them. Uh, Lori did say, by the way, strong core keeps you off the floor. So I, I think those are just words to live by. <laughs> so let's talk about exercise. Thank you, Lori, with strong core keeps you off the floor. Um, you really do want exercises that specifically challenge and strengthen your balance, um, address rigidity and improve flexibility. Again, if you're a little less rigid, you have a little bit more um, your reflexes to catch yourself. And that's all really good. Um, keeping your core straight, making sure your whole body is moving, um, you know, trying to get arms swinging, things that balance you. Also, yay, I know love free stuff. There are free exercises available online. Um, you can also look through our library, both Power for Parkinson's and PD Connect have presented with us. They, um, you can watch their programs, you can see what they do, but these are available for free online. So you can, you don't need to even leave your house and you can do some exercises. How cool is that? How easy is that? What about making your home safer? Again, we have had occupational therapists speak about this, so you can check that out online as well in our library, but make sure there is adequate lighting. You don't want to be stumbling around in the darkness. There's no point to that. Um, eliminate clutter. Make sure that there's more um, room to move around so you're not having to squeeze and turn to fit through an area. Eliminate throw rugs. Uh, I remember talking with a physical therapist and she said, you know, all they do is trip people like they have no real purpose other than to trip folks. And I was like, OK, um, considering raised toilets just to help you again, having the space between the furniture and making sure that any cords are tucked in. So, again, it's not a tripping hazard. It's not something to just trip over. Um, especially in the bathroom, one of the biggest places to fall, add mats in the tub so it's not a slippery, add grip or grab bars if needed. Um, it's really important to be safe. Don't worry about how it looks or whatnot. It's really more about keeping it safe. Um, something also avoid multitasking while walking so you're paying attention. I am very bad about this, that I'll be looking, especially if I'm walking outside, I'm admiring the houses or looking at someone's garden. And despite the fact that my name is Eden, I have no green thumb, but then I look at someone's garden and I'm like, why doesn't my garden look like that? And then the sidewalk is perhaps not flat and I trip. And luckily my, my reflexes are there that I catch myself, but there have been at least three times when I have been walking that I have honestly thought to myself, I am lucky I didn't trip and fall there because I tripped, but I caught myself and that would have been really bad. Um, something else, especially if there's any neuropathy, um, Terry used to say, really take your time standing up. I've also heard a physical therapist say that, don't get up and immediately start moving. You know, um, Jackie Lovejoy, who I used to work with, she would say like, stand up and really plant your feet. Make sure you feel your feet underneath you and look around where are you going before you start moving. So you are moving with purpose and you're not just kind of getting up and immediately going because that could also kick in the loss of blood pressure, the drop in blood pressure. Um, other tips, consciously lift your feet off the uh, ground, I wrote group, when walking um, so that you're not doing the Parkinson shuffle. Again, it's just easier to trip yourself up. Something else is to try making a wide turn, kind of like, oh, if I'm going to turn, let me go out and make that kind of almost like a U shape as opposed to here and then pivot on like a sharp angle. Again, just makes it a little bit easier for you to walk. Um, and then if you do need a walk aid, if you're having balance problems, walking stick, a cane, a walker, whatever. Um, I had this one couple and <laughs> the husband bought the wife, uh, she was the PWP, canes in every color. So he said that it, could, it matched every outfit she had and he always called it her buddy. So he was like, she'll leave the room. And I'd be like, hey, you forgot your buddy. 
And it was just really cool, you know, the way he was fun about it. Um, Leslie kind of talked about uh, with moving fast and multitasking, she runs into things constantly and her legs are really bruised up. Um, she has a lot of balance issues and it is just kind of like, hey, just, you know, don't move. You can slow it down a little bit. Try not to do two things at once. So yes, we had a program for it, breaking down bradykinesia, which is that slow movement. Again, we always encourage you to go check our library. Kelly also put some uh, information of other programs. I know we also did one September 7th, um, on September 7th, 2022, uh, on fog and falls, improving independence and mobility safety. Here we also had a program on breaking down uh, the neurogenic hypotension. We definitely, you know, just want to be aware of all these things that can start falling. Um, ben also commented, like all physical movement, follow through and don't stop short. I always ensure I am planted, firmly feeling the ground before taking the next step. And all professional athletes will tell you to follow through, but make sure you have that strong foundation. So now you're like, this would be a great topic. We should have this at our support group, but who could we ask? Well, a lot of people. You could talk to physical and occupational therapists. You could talk with advanced practice providers, your physician assistants and nurse practitioners. You could talk with yoga instructors. You could talk with rock steady boxing coaches. Um, you could talk with your movement disorder specialists, um, any dance for Parkinson's disease. All of these folks work with movement on a regular basis. Sorry, my screen is frozen. Okay, so now we're gonna do our breakouts. Um, really what I wanna know is, have you covered this in your group and who was your speaker? Did you learn anything? Um, somebody had actually put that Feldenkrais teaches you these skills. That might be something you'd wanna look up. Um, Lori wrote, learning how to fall really saved her and like having trekking poles so if there's something that you learned or you're like, you know, hey, maybe look this up. Like, I'm kind of curious now, Lori, like, how did you learn how to fall? Um, I know from circus acts, they always talk about the fact that that is one of the first things you, you need to learn is how to fall. But no, nobody really teaches that to you. So I'd be kind of curious if you wanted to share that, um, you know, when we come back. So... Kelly's going to go ahead and put you in breakout groups. Um, you don't have to do anything. And we'll see you back. Give you about 50 or so minutes. Come back around 105. And then we'll share. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. We're glad you're with us. I'm going to ask folks to come off mute right now. In room one, we have Deb, we have Debbie Coomer, we have Helena, we have Helena Fox, we have Karen, we have Michelle L, and we have Phyllis, who I know this is not a shy group, who would like to come off mute and share what you guys talked about. Debbie and I are going to speak. We're going to co-host, so to speak. Yes, Debbie, we are. Are you okay. Um, do you want to start, Debbie, or should I? Um, you want to start? I mean, we 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 discussed exercise. We discussed the Northwest Parkinson's Foundation and the Feldenkrais. Um, Karen, you want to go on? Um, when we talked about exercise, we added in Tai Chi um, as being very supportive for balance. We talked about. Um, Feldenkrais, which the Northwest Parkinson Foundation offers on Thursdays at one o'clock free. We, somebody mentioned assisted devices and having a buddy, which was very helpful and instrumental. Someone else mentioned a program called Matter of Balance, which I'm definitely going to pursue. Uh, a book called Falling is Not an Option by George Locker gives really good insight into 
how not to fall and if you do, Aye. what to do. Aye. We, we talked something? about the MacGyver video on falling, um, yes. how to get up from a fall, which I thought was quite interesting. It's called how to get up from the floor, MacGyver style. That mean you use a pop tart or something? Because MacGyver always did some weird stuff. <laughs> uh, I think the other dead mentioned it, but I'm not positive when we I didn't watch so. that. And then we get into what else we do at our meetings, where you know they did show and tell powerful tools for caregivers website. So we got into diet. We talked about the different apps. Um, we talked about Stride. We talked about Aurora. Um, Pro Karen, PD. Pro PD. So it was actually a great conversation for, and it was kind of a, I was gonna say it was a split group of support group leaders who have PD, who do not have PD. And I, I learned quite a bit from each of these people in our group here, to be honest with you. I took a, I took a lot of short notes that I now have to go back and redo my work <laughs> because they wanted to know my dog, so. Right. I do have to say that when we tangent, went off on a tangent, we ended up getting, getting into caregiver conversations and a few people made really, really wonderful suggestions on different caregiver programs and how to be supportive. So, um, we can always send you that information if anybody's looking for it. And we also talked about I'm art. sending us that because I can always send that out in the letter, the follow-up that I send. If you want to send me that information, I always love to um, include links in my email. Um, I can either send it rough draft or research it and make it more of a final draft. Um, we also talked about art and suggestions on Parkinson and art projects. Um, one person said MoMA. I know there's one at the Philadelphia Art Museum and someone else mentioned something at the Princeton Art Museum. So we're gonna follow up, they're virtual and they're also in person. Well, for sharing. Thanks, Deb. Now, thank you, Karen. Now we're gonna move on to group two. We have Barb, we have Dave Orlowski, we have Bernard Coley, we have Joey, we have Judy Reynolds, we have Perry, and we have Shabir. Again, that's a rowdy group. Who's going to come off mute? Judy, you want to do it or you want me to do it? I see Shabir also oh, talking. Yeah, I have some notes if you like. And oh, then go ahead, Shabir. Then Shabir. Then Shabir. What you want. Um, yeah, why don't you start, Shabir? Um, Okay, so um, there are lots of different topics we talked about as far as falling is concerned. One was avoid hitting your head. And if you do, go to emergency because there was somebody mentioned that they went home, this person went home and thought it was just a headache and then passed away because of that. So just Make sure you hit, you know, if you hit any, well, I would say even neck injury is dangerous because that, if you hit the head, you have to check your neck too because otherwise you may have paralysis, a problem alert. So that's one thing. Tai Chi, we came up about building reflection. So a lot of times we say, well, okay, how do you continue? You know, you can't think every time you fall. So you have to figure out some way of building the right reflection to know how to fall. You can't just think about it at the right time. Uh, don't use your arm because you can break your wrist. Uh, they talked about other protective, oh, footwear. You know, I remember I had a problem when I went to Barcelona where I fell on uh, coming down the slope. I didn't have my hiking boots. I had tennis shoes that I bought, but that helped if I had hiking shoes and I forgot my pole at a previous place. So I didn't have my pole that I usually, but that helps hiking poles or any kind of poles helps for that. The other protective equipment talking about knee pads and other things that we can use in, if you really 
worry about and afraid to act. Uh, the other thing we talk about is standing position rather than if you put your feet together and stand versus separate them and maybe use like boxing stand when you're standing that helps you move around easily if you want to go from the standing position or going uh, you know turning or whatever so don't pivot it it basically you know, use that uh what else Oh, the other thing that came up is don't help anybody else they have falling. Because I had, as somebody else, Judy had that uh, experience that I had. When I tried to grab somebody, he was just standing there and suddenly he just fell and my instinct was grab him. And I fell too and I hurt my back rather than, you know, we were at some confidence here. But that was the other thing that just, you know, I'm sorry, but that's a reaction we have. Uh, what else? Uh, talk to your, um, your, oh, that was the other thing. Movement disorder specialists, a lot of time test your pulling back. Uh, Joey said that he has an MDS that always tests every time he goes to test back because that helps. It's a good way to know how you're progressing if there's one going better or worse. So that helps. What else? Uh, implementing, oh, in the support group, talk about solutions rather than you know, problems. Maybe even implement some of the practice. We can invite OT or PT to try to figure out, uh, you know, to help people understand what they're doing. It's it's more experiential rather than just talking about it. So that's one of the, you can even have, if your PD office is close by, maybe have a meeting at there rather than, you know, so they have all the things to share. Uh, okay. Oh, making extended family aware of your coming and reducing your fall. So if there are things lying around or throw rugs, make sure they are aware of it. Uh, next one, we talked about caught dogs and cats. That could be any <laughs> pet. You know, they come and jumping around, so make sure you let them know you're coming so they move them out and then bring them when you're ready rather than having jump on you kind of thing when you come. I think I have Stanford and other insurance program to visit your house and they, they do an examination, see what are the risk you have for falling and other things. They do that uh, there. Use Alexa to alert or anything like that when you're falling because a lot of times when you're alone, you don't know who to call and how to call if you're falling. <laughs> my, Alexa, my Alexa heard you. <laughs> oh, you want to... <laughs> whoops. Okay. Well, That's how sensitive they are, see? Yep. Well, anyway, that was the last thing we talked kind of was just living independent and maybe it would be a good topic. And then Judy introduced the fact that you have, uh, what do you call that support group? Flying solo. Flying solo. So those are some of the things that we talked. Anything else, guys, you can chime in. Uh, the people that I miss. No, good so, job. That was the best note taker comments yeah. I've ever heard. Yeah. <laughs> you got it all. <laughs> Thank you. Now going on to group three, we have Corey, we have Don, we have Greg, we have Caitlin, we have Karen Williams, we have Myra and we have jo uh, Roger. would like to come off mute. Oh, don't make me pick names. Corey, are you trying you to come off mute? There you go. Oh, uh, well, they always pick me well. <laughs> I'll, sh I'll share this with you, Myra. Why don't you start? I'll start because I came in okay. late. So okay. <laughs> we, we had a, an excellent conversation about different types of shoes and wearing the proper footwear, uh, and especially down south where people want to wear their sandals all the time or their bedroom slippers because it's so hot and they don't have backs on them. And then they also stand in freestanding water and get uh, 
infection. So that's not good either. But uh, the group came up with Skechers. I hope I have all this right. Kizik and either Billy or Billy. Billy's. Uh, with a B or with a V? B. B, okay. Billy, that uh, are supposedly very good shoes and also help for side to side movements in addition to forward and backward. Um, and then uh, people were asking about adaptive equipment for the house, so which I was able to tell them about a lot of different adaptive equipment, um, getting rid of throw rugs, having enough lighting, especially in your stairs and heavily trafficked areas, um, reflective strips on the edges of your stairs so you know where the stair stops, so you don't overshoot or undershoot, um, whole things around the toilet, around the shower, uh, and a variety of uh, things to get in and out of the car. And somebody else can take over now. <laughs> we, we also talked about, not just about how not to fall, but how to fall. Some of you talked about that too. Learning how to fall is very important and also learning how to get up from a fall. Uh, you mentioned the MacGyver film. And the first time I saw that Eden was at a program in Irvine, California for support group people. And it, it's, it's excellent. It's just, it's very, very well done. Very, very clever. But uh, we came up with all kinds of information, uh, adaptive devices, <laughs> getting in and out of a car, you know, the, the little handle that you can put in to help you get out, how to turn so you can get out of the car. Um, you know, we took, you know, we came up with, with so many good ideas. I think everybody learned something from this group. Uh, Myra, do you have anything to add? Well, you could show your light. The oh, special my, light, just to have lights all around. Here's my so, Mr. Beam. Yeah. Mr. Beam's it, light. It, These are battery operated. They're motion detectors. Uh, you can fasten them to the wall, but they're fairly heavy. So you can set them on a counter. You can set them on the in a hallway uh, along the uh, uh, baseboard. And they provide a tremendous uh, amount of light. I, I took them, somebody mentioned Matter of Balance. I took that class here a couple of months ago. And I took this in. I, you can get them on Amazon.com. And if your, your children or your friends are wondering what to give you for your birthday or Christmas, have them give you some of these adaptive devices. That, you know, mm -hmm. the lighting is so important. Three C cells. Three C cells. Three. Three C cells. Yes. Okay. And they let they let you know when they're wearing out because they the the little light stays on dimly for so you know to put new batteries in. But they work great. And I think we just talked about, you know, be care, walk slowly. we don't rush. Today's at this point we don't need to rush, but things happen so quickly that way, you know. Have flashlights around too if you need it. I think we came up with some really neat things though. And I was pleased to be in the group. <laughs> uh, so when you go to a new hotel, family or friends, try the shower and the stool before you need yes. to practice when you have time, not when you're out of time. Yeah. Yeah, right. Planning ahead. Right. Very important. Right. Be careful. Bottom line. When we learn how to fall, actually practice with a PT falling on mattress so we aren't afraid to fall. Uh, there is an excellent article in the, um, if you, you subscribe to uh, AARP, I think it was not in the most recent bulletin, but the one before that had an article on how to fall. Um, and it, it, was, it was extremely well done, talked about, and, and, and Roger talked about that, protecting your arms, but also protecting your head, but also not, not being tense, uh, being very relaxed when you go down and then rolling. Uh, you're much less likely to to hurt yourself. <clears throat> and if you learn how to do this ahead of time, even though you have a nanosecond when you're about to fall, you actually can prevent a serious injury by knowing how to fall. Hmm. 
I can put the article in my planner. It's always with me. <laughs> I actually am going to put the article in the chat. It's it will be good. Out of fall. Thanks. It was just done July 2023 with AARP um, with Harrison Ford stunt double, which I think is pretty cool. And then last but not least, group four with Ben, Betsy, Bonnie, Lori, Melanie, and Wendy S. Who would like to come off mute and share? Hmm. Again, I know you got a rousing There's, group. There you Lori, go. Lori, you back yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, I couldn't, I moved okay. my mouse and it wouldn't work. Now my mouse is all over the place. <laughs> Hold on. All right, here all right. we go. All right, so we talked about some everybody. All, everybody almost being last. You guys took everything. It's kind of like being on Family Feud. Like we're trying to find it with something that's left. <laughs> um, uh, we also talked about education, like earlier, like when, when kids are like when you're younger, just realizing how important balance is, just in general. So talk to your grandkids and tell them it's important. Um, we talked about dancing, and one thing that you guys didn't touch on, which we actually talked at at length about was urban polling and trekking poles and act using activator poles and as so having someone that's actually certified in urban polling coming and speaking at your support group um and then um someone in our group i can't remember your names because i have parkinson's i forget names um it's called joy explorations and it's that's how she got involved in it and that's someone in michigan that's certified and you may be able to check some of that stuff out but we also talked, you guys talked about somebody's touched on Alexa, but you can also have Alexa turn on your lights for you. We talked about shoes, motion lighting. Then we, we started talking a little bit about freezing, but you guys really, nobody really touched on that very much today. We were more talking about not falling, but, but freezing can lead to falling. Definitely. So, and the other thing was know your company. <laughs> Like Ben was talking about, he was with somebody who freezes and she was gone for a while in the bathroom because she was stuck there. Like eventually somebody went and got her out, but she's, um, one of the more important things here, cues. And if you think, if someone said that they, had, they heard that this is a foolproof thing, if you if you think of a, your favorite song, start singing it. And, and I'm saying, if you start tapping it, you'll get moving. It'll get you moving. It'll get you out of a tough, tough jam. Keep your phone with you. And the device that you all were talking about for your car to get out of your car is called a car cane, because I have used them with my parents to help them get in and out of the car. Um, and then we talked about the four steps of freezing that I learned, which is stop where you are, take a deep sigh, shift your weight until you feel it, and then you take a step. And I will tell you when you do fall, I was in the air, I was up in the air and I did a ninja MacGyver roll. I mean, I did a ninja roll, and you basically take your whole body and you tuck your shoulder and you go on your shoulder. If you're going to hurt anything, you're going to hurt your shoulder and your back. You're not going to hit your head. You're not going to break your arm. And if you execute that the right way, it's perfect. I didn't do it quite right, but um, I didn't end up with a concussion or hitting my head or anything. I did end up with some muscles pulled away from my rib cage, which is not, not very comfortable, but it's not life-threatening. Um, we talked about our shoes and basically... Um, what I learned about freezing was there's three types. I didn't tell you guys this in our group. There's three types. There's the, the motion freezing, the physical freezing. There's cognitive freezing where you just forget what you're saying. You lose your train of thought. And then there's also emotional freezing, like a panic attack. You're just, you're just, you just can't function. And that's not, not necessarily all just PD. Emotional freezing is a real thing in general, but um, it just activates your fight or flight. Like if you see your grandkid at the steps, even if you freeze, you're going to get to your grandkid because there's a different mechanism in your brain telling you to get to that child. So did I miss anything, anybody? No, that was very good. I did also put in the chat as well the MacGyver. I'm going to go ahead and um, send this also. Um, I did get the email from Karen. So I will look up those resources as well. So when you guys get the follow-up email, you'll have everything. Of course, if you want to save your chat right now for some of these, if you click on the three dots in your open chat next to the happy face, you can save your chat. Also, um, 
Karen Williams. I believe it's the GE motion activated LED nightlight. When I just put in motion activated nightlights, um, this came up. Oh, Karen, you want to come off mute and tell me? It's <clears throat> the company is Beams, B E A M S, like sunbeams, and okay. Amazon.com has them. Okay. So I will look that up so people can Beams. have that link. I just want to make sure people had it. Yeah. Okay. And then um, just so everybody knows if they're curious, next fundamentals training is going to be on August 17th. It's going to be 4 p.m. Pacific. So we're doing a little bit later for the Pacific folks, um, 7 p.m. Eastern time. That is about two hours that we do this. So about four to six if you're in Pacific time, about seven to nine if you're in Eastern. And then we're going to take our show on the road. So we have Baton Rouge coming up this week on Friday night and Saturday. We're going to be doing, going to be in Georgetown, Texas on August 24th. We're going to be in Las Cruces, New Mexico on September 7th. We're going to be in Corbin, Kentucky on September 23rd. We're going to be in Pensacola on October 20th. And we're going to be in Tucson on October 29th. So I hope some, this is close to some folks. We hope to see you guys there. As always, we appreciate you spending your time with us. You will get this recording. This is our regular meeting. Um, probably tomorrow I'll send the email, but I just want to thank everybody for everything you do in your community, doing these support groups, doing in-person programs, and just being all around awesome. So have a great day, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.